guys, Rod the Nerd here. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Chamberlain plush. So this is my second Dark Crystal plush uh, that I made recently. After I made Sketech, I was really proud about how well I was able to capture, capture how many details that he had. Um, and I was really surprised about how well that plush actually turned out. Um, and so I decided why not make a Chamberlain plush and if you're not familiar with my channel or you haven't been, you know, subscribed to my channel or watch my videos for a long period of time, uh, I actually did a, uh, I, I made a Chamberlain plush, um, about like three years ago and that was when I was, uh, pretty young and yeah, you could definitely see in that thumbnail where, yeah, but I, I did, I kind of left that plush alone i didn't really touch it all that much and i didn't really you know even know that chamberlain is my favorite character in the dark crystal universe i i he, the plush that i made i just didn't really do much with him he just kind of sat um in my room and then just started collecting a lot of hair and everything like that but when i made skek tech for no apparent reason because i just started getting into dark crystal yet again and I just decided to make Skek Tech, and I was like, man, I, I really liked how I, how Skek Tech turned out, and I, was, and I was like, you know what, screw it, I'm making a Chamberlain plush, just how I did with Skek Tech, um, and you could definitely see the similarities between the two, uh, I used Sock, as, you know, the Sock is the main material for the plush here, um, but he is very more, I want to say more accurate and more detailed than Skek Tech, um, Skek Tech had a lot more detail going on especially in the front area with all his tools and everything like that but i feel like this plush for chamberlain is more accurate to how he appeared um in the original film um and actually this plush right here is actually a combination of his his design from the first uh, dark crystal movie and dark crystal age of resistance and yes there is a difference between the two outfits um the uh, uh, the age of resistance outfit ha is more uh more bright and vibrant uh color of red um and he has a lot more um brown going through than uh black um he has a brown robe section i'm just gonna move his hands here he has a brown robe section where this uh black sock would be um and he has uh, a lot more um kind of red um robes going down um in the back area here um, and how this is actually a combination of both his designs is actually because the back section here is more accurate to his uh, Age of Resistance design. And I also did use the Weta statue as a reference material for the um, overall design and details that I, I captured and everything like that. Um, and you can definitely see on the Weta statue where the kind of the pink, uh, well not really, it's, it's more like kind of uh, light pink reddish kind of color. Uh, you can still see that robe, and there's a lot more brown in there, a lot more dark red, um, and there's a le there's a less amount of black robes um, in his um, Age of Resistance design than the first movie. Um, and I and I really wanted to capture the the blackness because if I just kept le leaving it as much red as possible, it just would have it just looked it would have looked too similar um, with each other, and it wouldn't look that great because of how much red he has on him. So I decided to use the um, the black. Um, uh robe that he had in the first film and combined it with the age resistance design and i feel like it, it really captures the overall robe likeness that he has um and i also used the uh the instead of using the brown because i don't have any brown socks i just decided to use the the uh the black sock for the robe in the front here um and you it's a lot and they're in the inner sleeve area here is actual like purple-ish instead of like kind of red uh or uh not red uh like tan or white um it's mostly white but since his design is a lot more uh dirty and roughed up in the first movie um where the the white and the red kind of like the, the 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 color of the the red and the white kind of faded away over time um so this looks like more like he's just he just he's, he's just making good progress i guess um and also coming to the collar here where the in the actual first movie uh where his collar is actually um like black um and in age resistance there's a lot there's a like kind of like um orange bits sticking out of his collar and everything like that um so i just used the black there because i thought it just looked a 
lot more cooler, I guess. Um, and, but I did keep the age resistance design with like the, the silver kind of collar going around um, his, um, his neck here. Um, and I feel like that looks a little bit nice. Um, but yeah. And I feel like this guy, like I said, has a lot more details and a lot more um, stuff going on than Skek Tech, uh, especially with the techniques that I used. Um, coming to the actual main body, um, I actually used um, a kind of, coming back to the bottom here, uh, here is the red here. Now, if you remember in my uh, Skek Tech plush review, you would know that the, the robes kind of like go, uh, went around the sock, which this one is actually um is the quite opposite of that it's where you can actually still see the sock overall body um i cut out um the, the sock here i stuffed the sock in first then cut it out to what the what how i wanted the body to like the size of the body to be then i cut out the front here and then i cut out the the black sock area and then i glued it together and then i stuffed it again and but i couldn't you know usually i crumple up the bottom of the sock uh to give it more like a um, rounded feature um, so it looks more 3D, but for here, I couldn't do that because the sock is too thick and it would, it would look way too, like, crumpled and messy. So I just took out a, um, red piece of felt here and I just traced the, the bottom here and I just glued it in there. And I feel like it looks way better, um, in my personal opinion, because then you can actually see, like, the rope kind of falling down. Um, instead of just using a lot of felt to create that rope effect, I feel like the sock really does that, um, the job uh the job way better than just using a lot of felt to create that robe detail especially with the the robes on the back here i used a lot more socks than i did felt for this uh for the back of the the robes here i used the the pink sock here i used the black um but there is you know the the dark red and the brown and the little piece of uh black and felt going there as well um, and coming up to the hump here, um, on the back here, this is actually a different shade of red, um, than this red right here. It's actually a different sock that I used, and I used a kind of dark red to get that really weird kind of detail that he has on the hump, and I feel like it, I did a really good job of creating that, that look, because it's a very iconic feature for Chamberlain here, besides, you know, the red and everything like that. Um, coming back to the front here, uh, this is actually some jewelry, um, and it's, for some reason... Sorry, side rant here. For some reason, the Weta company decided to do a lot more uh, uh, pictures of Skektek, uh, Skektek statue than Chamberlain. Uh, the Skektek statue had a lot more close-up on smaller details, like in the front area, um, in the head, and everything like that. Um, but with the Chamberlain statue, they got up like with details that are like kind of like obscure that you wouldn't really want to know. Uh, like they got they got like the front view, but not like the actual front front view, what I, which I wanted to see um, for Chamberlain here, because uh, the Skektek statue it actually got like an actual photo of what his his chest area looks like from the front, but for the statue it just kind of like faced it forward. Um, and since that the, the design that the the pose that they got him in, where he's holding the staff and the sword and everything like that, his arm kind of covers up the chest area, and you couldn't really see the detail um, from the actual um chest area and personally for me i felt like if you're going to promote a statue especially like a crazy design like um chamberlain in the in the skexies and all of that i feel like you should probably take a lot more photos from every angle uh, every angle around the statue to get you know the the viewer or the buyer uh as much detail you know uh, as possible so they can actually buy the product uh, I feel like that's why Skek Tech sold out a lot faster than Chamberlain does, even though that Chamberlain's a lot more popular. Uh, probably because they actually just had a lot more uh, pictures of the statue for Skek Tech than Chamberlain does. Um, and I'm not saying that that's what is fault. I'm just saying that they, th if you're just promoting anything, especially like a statue of a really complicated character design, or just a statue or figure in general, capture the, like, take pictures from every angle around the thing so that everybody can see the detail and amount of effort that the figure or the statue promotes right that's just my personal opinion um so i had to use a lot of different material source materials like screen caps from the first movie and i had to rewatch the sew and like pause the some moments where skek tech is actually seen from the front skek tech oh my god chamberlain where he's actually like where um where he's actually from the front um and i actually used 
I actually used the, uh, the Chamberlain Funko Pop as some reference material as well uh, because they actually took a picture from the dead front instead of just from the side for some reason. So you, this, this whole entire detail section right here is just from the basically just from the uh the funko pop with like the um the kind of the jewelry uh design up here in the top um and this little doohickeys down here um some more like kind of strain area um and i did use some tan strain to get that effect as well um so i think that actually turned out really well um and then i also used um some other like materials like cosplay uh photos as well um to get like the kind of the front area because his his sleeve is a lot more complicated and it's very hard to see what his sleeve actually looks like because like again with weta the the they don't get you know the much detail that i wanted them so i had to use screen caps and uh cosplay materials for what other people think that his actual um sleeve design looks like um, and this is the best what I came up with. And I feel like it does a really good job of creating the overall design there. And I also use the strain as well. Um, and then you can see the designs on the, on the, where the strain attaches and everything like that. Um, and I also used, fun fact, uh, being me, I totally forgot to actually buy white socks, um, to get the white in the sleeve area here. Um, and thank God that I actually had a scrap piece of white sock, um, lying in my kind of sock bin area not in my room just down here and in, in the in the kind of like the felt area where i keep all my like um plush stuff like stuffing all that stuff um then i have a little sock bin with all the socks that i that i want to use and haven't used yet and everything like that um but i i ran out of white sock i i think i was making i think i made lord shen um and i feel like i think he took a lot of uh white sock um to actually make his design and this was the leftovers of Lord Shen's sock, pretty much. And it was very, very limited of um, felt and everything. It was very limited supply. So I had to use this, this sock wisely because if I mess it up, it would have... I wouldn't even be able to make Chamberlain's sleeve. Um, so these were the scrap pieces of loose sock that were in the bottom of the bin here. Um, so you can see the bottom of the... The sleeve there very very nice i really like how this kind of drapes over it as well um but yeah that's the that's the kind of the loose scrap that i found and this over here is the kind of the top uh part of the sock here where you know where your ankle actually you know where you slip on the sock and that's where you could definitely see where the the ankle bit is there so that's where the top of the sock was and it was very limited a supply um so i had to where you can see on this one right here it's a lot more longer and this one right here is a lot more shorter because this actual sock piece right here was very shorter than the actual scrap piece right here. Um, but I don't think it looks too terribly bad uh, because, you know, the robes and everything, they're, they're, they're robes, right? So they, there's not going to have like a perfect side by side, you know, look to it. It's not going to be like a, like a mirror where it's like the completely the exact same thing on both sides. So it's a lot more kind of random and jugged and everything like that. So that's what I wanted to, you know recreate there and i think it does a really good job and it was completely by accident so i'm totally making this up right now but anyway coming back to the hands here i used uh, i was originally going to use purple felt for the actual hands um but i decided to go with like the same skek tech route with like the pipe cleaners as the actual main figures instead of wrapping around felt um for the um the uh the hands there um, and I feel like, I think this is what I'm going to do for more, um, Skeksy plushies because the, um, they have really skinny hands. And like I said in my Skek Tech review, if I just wrapped around felt, it would just make the fingers a lot more thicker than I actually wanted them to be. And I felt like these do a really good job of creating the overall creepiness that they have with their hands and everything like that. Um, and then you can see the hand is glued on to some more loose pieces of felt here with like the, um, kind of um, sleeve uh end there where it's kind of drooping off there so you can see the tan there it's a different it's like kind of it's a different shade from this tan right here um and coming back to the head here uh this is like the first time i'm actually talking about the head here uh the head is a different is actually purple uh with a little bit of tan here uh skek tech's head is a lot more blue um and but chamberlain's head is a lot more purple with a little bit of tan going around the bottom of the chin area and then you can see his beak here um, and I was going to give him like a little smile, like a little smirk going on there. Um, but I decided not to do that because it would have been way too distracting and it just, it wouldn't look that great. 
Um, but yeah, and you can see the eyes there. They're either facing forward there, so he's a lot more staring down at you and everything like that. Um, but for articulation, it's basically the same thing with Skek Tech, where there's pipe cleaners in the arms um, and also in the head as well. Um, so you can also bend the the, um, the head, the neck area, um, and then you can also bend the um, the uh, sleeve area here, the arm bit there, so you can see that as well. Um, but I, it's just kind of uh, like a posing thing because if I just didn't have any pipe cleaner at all, it would it would just be a lot more droopy and it wouldn't give him much shape. I mean, also I can just also get him into some bendy, creepy poses and everything like that. Um, and also, I don't think I need to explain the articulation of the fingers. They're just pipe cleaners, so you can just bend them however the hell you want. Um, but since this is my new and approved Chamberlain plush, now comes the time where I'm going to compare this Chamberlain here to my, uh, to my first one. And you can see where this guy uh, approves a lot more. Oh, and I also forgot to mention the shoulder pads there, so you can see the shoulder pads. But anyway, let's compare the two here. Wow. You can definitely see the improvement of this guy, especially in the shape of the body here. This is a lot more what I wanted here. Um, where it's a lot, you can definitely see the how 3D dimensional it looks because it, I use sock and a lot of stuffing. This here is just felt here. Um, and I've actually started to evolve my plush making. You can definitely see the the evolution of plush making throughout the years. This is only three years apart. So this was 2019 and this is today, 2023. Um, so I'm only using, I'm starting to use socks as my main body and arm and everything like that. I am not, I'm only using felt for like smaller details like the head and like, you know, some small details going out through the body and everything. So this is like, how I'm going to make plushes from now on instead of using felt here because you could definitely see how he just looks he just looks 2d he doesn't look 3d as much as I wanted here um and you could definitely see how I try to recreate the overall robe look of him but it just looks like he has four legs and he's just walking and it just doesn't look all that great um and you could definitely see there's a lot of hair going on because like I said he just sat in my room collecting hair so there's cat hair dog hair my hair you could probably do several DNA tests on this guy, and you could probably find some other creatures that have not even been discovered by the human race. That's how long he's been sitting in my room and just collecting hair and dust and everything like that. Um, and this is my overall, like, my, this is my, like, my critique, my critique, uh, whatever the hell I just said there. Um, my critique of how I'm being critical of this guy right now. So, um, coming to this guy right here, you could definitely see where I didn't use felt at all, um, for the actual collar bit, I just used strain, because I made this guy with only one, um, image in mind, where this guy right here, I had several different images to work with, that being the Weta statue, um, because when, the, when I made this guy, the Weta statues didn't even exist, um, so I had to use, like, screen caps from the movie, and I also had to use one image of a cosplay, um, photo. I mean, it's not a bad cosplay at all. It actually looks really good, so you could definitely see how it was just, I was just mostly basing this plush on the cosplay instead of the actual character, which with this plush right here, I based it more on how he actually looks in the film and, and, and in the show. Um, but coming back to the collar here, you could definitely see where I just use string for the collar instead of using felt right here. And I feel like the, the, the black here, uh, the collar just looks a lot more nicer than what I have, whatever the hell this is going on here. Um, and I only used very limited supply of felt here. This was like my last um, red felt that I had before I bought more. Um, and I had, you know, uh, for creating like the kind of robe wavy fabric effect of gravity, I used string uh, where I just used the sock where it just, it just does the, socks just do the gravity, you know, look of robes and like clothing just a lot better because they're actually fabric and they're actual like material but with this the felt does do a little bit more of like you know curvy and everything like that and like but yeah but socks just do a lot better um and you can see the hands here um even back then i wasn't even too happy with the hands here um and you can see like the really weird 
I, nails. I don't know why I gave him nails, and you could definitely see the overall improvement of the hands there. Coming to the head here, you could definitely see where I use a lot more different techniques of actual, like, different details of like because his head has a lot more different colors in it than just a one simple color um and so it's just tan and the reason why i gave him googly eyes is because he was you know kind of like a crazy crazy character right so i just kind of gave him googly eyes because it just made it a lot more you know expressive i guess you could call it but I felt like the, you could definitely see where this is a lot more expressive because it looks a lot more three-dimensional. I mean, googly eyes are already three-dimensional, but it just doesn't look that great. And also because you can't really give him an expression, which this, I, I just made him have like a kind of like a slint expression. This is just like just basic ex expression. And I also gave him a bottom jaw, um, which just looks a little bit too weird. And I think that having this the um, these guys not have a bottom jaw just looks a lot more um impressive and a lot more um a lot more unique than what i have going on here and you can see the beak there um and this was back then when i actually traced out my shapes with marker like sharpie i don't do that anymore i just go off what I, i'm kind of good at cutting shapes like this is all like all these different shapes here are from my scissors my fabric scissors all of this all the detail, everything is from my scissors. I didn't trace anything. And you could definitely see why I stopped doing that because it just leaves like this ugly black line over everything. And it just doesn't look all that great. But coming to the hump here, this is a really, really thing that I wanted to improve highly of because the hump in the film and especially the TV show, there's a lot more, you know, three dimensional shapes overlapping on each other. This right here, I just use like Sharpie, like a very fine tip Sharpie. And you can definitely see that it's it's fading now. The, the Sharpie is just fading. So you can't really see much of the detail right here. And that's why I wanted to use like felt as like a actual like uh, d detail um, material for, you know, details and everything like that, because you can actually overlap things and it just looks a lot more nicer and it won't like fade over time on like marker here. Um, and then you can see kind of like the black robe kind of thing, but it just looks like he has a long locks of hair. He's literally Rapunzel. He's, he's just going to throw down his hair and let somebody, a gelfling, I don't know, climb up his hair or whatever. Uh, but that's just what it looks like. And there's no actual detail on the, on the back at all, but you could definitely see where there's a lot more um, details. There's a lot more depth to this plushie than what I have here. Um, but yeah, this is a uh, great improvement over this version here. And this is, this is a very short between, between, you know, this guy and this guy here. This is only three years apart. So you can definitely see where I've improved and why I'm not using felt as my main material anymore. That goes to socks now because I could just make a lot more details, a lot more three-dimensional stuff happen more than this i'm still like proud of this guy because he is like my first and everything like that but the, i you got to admit this guy just looks a lot more nicer and a lot more tv show slash movie accurate and everything like that um but yeah i think that i have improved tremendously over the past years three years of making plushies so this is kind of what i want my plushies to be now um but i hope you enjoyed this video um so like comment subscribe i don't care what you do but you know what time it is so bye guys